to my channel. Today I'm going to attempt to enter my chef era. I just eat a quesadilla for lunch every single day and I'm trying to expand and there's this meal I always eat when I'm up at Snowbird. Throughout this video I'm going to read some very anticipated fantasy books that I've been hearing a ton about. I feel like this whole summer I haven't been very good at doing stuff for the sake of having fun like just going to the mountains, cooking good food, reading new books that I think would fit my favorite genre. But I'm just like living very simply this year and I think that's okay but lately I've been feeling the pull to just do more stuff. <laughs> just do stuff. I've just been like sticking very close to home, reading my books, working, and I just don't really go on any side quests or adventures. I wanna do that before summer ends because I can feel myself already getting into the fall mindset and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta have some more summer memories first. I'll get into more of an official reading update in a second, but as I am cooking today, I'm going to be listening to Book of Azrael by Amber Nicole. Stay tuned for updates. <laughs> And honestly, it was good. I made it after a meal I always get at a restaurant. I thought it'd be fun to have it at home. Anyway, I am here now to give an official reading update. And I feel like since you guys have been alongside me for this entire series, I have to start the vlog by giving an update on Mother, what is this called? Mother of Death and Dawn, which is the third and final book in The War of Lost Hearts. And I have 150 pages left. I think this book, is probably resting at about a four star right now. It's lost me a little bit in the way that, yes, it is so good, but I don't necessarily think it needs to be 700 pages, though that could be a me problem because I read 700 page books never, pretty much. Plot wise, there has been so much that has made me giggle and I've loved it. And it's similar to Akhtar in the way that the third book is like, the war is here. I think it's there for most of the series. I like, but it's the conclusion, the grand final act of the war. So I love that aspect. But once again, I do think we could shave 100 or 200 pages off. I think it lost the momentum for me. But then I went to Goodreads and all my mutuals had rated it 4.5 or 5 stars. And I'm just like very not gullible. Gullible? Other people's opinions rub off on me very easily. So I'm like, oh, maybe it is a 5. Maybe it's a me problem. But I think the last 150 pages will be very telling because she is similar to Sarah J Mass in the way that the end is just insane and you're going feral. But then the beginning is pretty slow and you have to get into it. I had to Google it because it was going to bug me. Impressionable was the word. And then the reason I started the book of Azrael, well, there's two reasons. First of all, I have been hearing about this book for so long to where it just lives in the back of my mind. And I have my Kindle Unlimited subscription and I knew it was on there. So I decided I'm gonna start reading this before I finish War of Lost Hearts so that I can kind of keep my reading momentum going. We're just flowing into the next. I'm genuinely really enjoying it. Diana is our main character. I feel like we always get the tall, dark, mysterious shadow characters from men so it's so refreshing to have that as a woman and she's very sassy and it's also giving urban fantasy a little bit like crescent city it's the world building is not like crescent city but diana's attitude is very bryce quinlan coded i did go into this book blind and if you ask me about the world building even 15 chapters in that's none of my business <laughs> i'm starting to grasp it but i'm just not that worried about it. I feel like it's easy to understand so far and it's gonna keep coming to me. But basically Diana is imprisoned to this evil man and she has to do whatever he says because he knows her sister and he says he's gonna kill her sister if she doesn't listen. So they've been this way for a thousand years. Diana is just doing everything for her. It is dual POV. So then we have our male main character, Liam. From what I understand, he is a god and I'm still trying to grasp his power. But all I know is that he hates himself so much and he's so angry and unwell. They are not friends. It's not going well. I think I'm gonna now take my dogs up the canyon and try to find a fun little river for them to splash in while I read. I feel like that's such a vibe to finish. Wait, I'm gonna be so sad actually. But to finish a three book series up in the mountain, let's go up the canyon together and I will show you how beautiful it is this time of year. now the 
the next day, Friday, and I have so many reading updates to share. But first, I'm gonna make myself an iced chai, and I thought I would show how I make it. I've been getting some questions about it, and I know when I started to make matcha and chai at home, I was so overwhelmed with what exactly to use. I'll show you mine, maybe it will give you some inspo. There's so many different milk options you can use, and I usually try to use coconut for matcha, and oat milk for chai but I also think coconut milk is really good with chai but I'm just using this random brand and then I love to experiment with different coffee creamers to add to both my matcha and my chai and also raspberry syrup or like the syrups you can buy on the what is it like the snow cone kind of syrups or maybe they're on the coffee aisle those are really good to put into first fill up your jar with ice I'm gonna fill it like one half of the way with oat milk, maybe a little less than half. And then I really love to just get pre-made chai, that's all I ever do. Chai varies depending on which coffee shop you go to. This one has more spices, which I think can be so good. I love to get this kind in the fall especially, but my go-to for most of the time is just the Tazo Classic Chai Latte, which you can get at any other grocery store pretty much. I get it at Smith's, which is like a Kroger. But I feel like this one is very Starbucks-esque. It tastes similar to theirs. And then, can you even see? <laughs> okay, all you do, with chai. Matcha is more complicated to make because there's an added step, but with chai, I just add it to the milk. Nothing is better than this noise. Oh, that that's ASMR right there. I just add my creamer in on top. Ta-da! Stunning! Now, let us get into some anticipated reading updates. The Canyon was so fun yesterday. I was only able to actually read 50 pages because... Where are ya? These guys were hyper. Dogs were dogging. They had much to explore, much to bark and yap about, which is great. That's half the reason I go, is that they can have fun. I read 50 pages there, which was so fun and pretty. And then last night, I finished the last 100 pages, which I feel like it went by so slow. It's like the slowest I've ever read on purpose because I just didn't want it to end. This series has been such a friend to me. It's just so cool to find a new favorite series. Thoughts on book three are, I do think it could have been 100 to 200 pages shorter. There was a lot of plot that I feel like was like the nitty gritty of the war and I feel like I didn't necessarily need to be there for it. I could have just gotten a summary from the characters. That being said, there were moments in this and aspects of this that made me absolutely feral. As always, I laughed. I cried. Tribe. It's crazy how sometimes you don't realize like the extent of how much you care about certain characters until it's time to say goodbye to them. I had one paragraph left in this last book and I was glitching. I was just like, no, what if I just don't read it? What if I don't read it forever? I mean, I do still have the novella about Max when he was younger. So it's like, we don't have to say goodbye forever yet. I ended up just reading it, <laughs> of course. I gave this five stars. Also, I feel like it'd be probably like realistically a 4.75, but I don't usually do half ratings. I just don't know if there are many fantasy series out there that are about war and devastation and pain that are somehow so emotional and gentle. These characters are very selfless, very emotionally intelligent. The setting is super interesting. The plot twists are great. I just realized I sat in this exact spot in this exact sweater finishing book two. Is this my War of Lost Hearts sweater? Overall, 1 million percent recommend this series. Yeah, you've heard me say it all, so I'll leave it at that. Next up, we have the Book of Azrael, and I am on chapter 35 out of 54 chapters. I'm over halfway. I definitely have a lot of thoughts on it. Liam, I'm just gonna say it, not my type. He definitely kind of gives me the ick. He's like, I'm so wounded and hurt and bad. I don't deserve love. It's like that trope of I'm so dark and traumatized with zero emotional skills. You should never be with me. And she's like there for him healing. It reminds me a little bit of like Dramine fan fiction, which I've only read one, but I think the Dramine girls would go feral for this. I think that this man, Liam, is one of the least emotionally intelligent characters ever. There's reason for that, like he has a lot of trauma. But going from Max in War of Lost Hearts to Liam, like personally he doesn't do it for me. But I do like Diana too. I don't relate to her so there's that aspect of it, but I think it's really fun to read like a snarky, dark, 
female character. I think what gets on my nerves a little bit about this type of book is that it almost feels like the author rearranges the world to help character development rather than the characters being affected by the world. For every hour of banter and flirting and relationship development, there will be like five minutes of plot, which I always think is like kind of a shame when that happens because the world is so cool. I want to learn more about it. That's also how I felt about Powerless by Lauren Roberts. That's just the vibe of the book. It's more character driven. World building is still good, but more on the back burner. So I appreciate it for what it is. And I think a lot of people would really like it. But personally, I do like to get more into the nitty gritty of the world building. I would just love more plot going on because it feels like it's just also just been like one long event. Like there's barely been any time jumps. I think at the beginning there were some. And then it's just been like 20 chapters in a row of just like not a lot of plot. Very reckless coded. We're going to banter here. And then we're almost going to get captured. And then we're going to banter here. I honestly feel like now I'm just in that headspace where I'm enjoying it for that vibe specifically. I don't think it's gonna be a five star. I'm thinking like maybe a 3.5, but like a good 3.5. I also started a new book on my Kindle because an audiobook to me is just separate from what I'm actually reading. So I went from Mother of Death and Dawn to Quicksilver, which is on Kindle Unlimited. I'll keep doing Book of Azrael on audio. To be honest, I'm mostly going to Quicksilver blind. As a general plot summary, I've heard that it is a human woman stolen or taken somehow into the Fey realm. Our main character Ceres lives in the poorest district of her city. They have water rations and there's like a plague there and horrible quality of life. So she steals things for her and her brother so that they can just survive. At the beginning of the story where I'm at, she attempts to steal something. If I'm being honest, I'm like, okay, let's just get through a book of Azrael so I can read this. I'm gonna clean my house a little bit today and try to get farther on Book of Azrael on the audiobook while I do that and then I will sit down and actually read on my Kindle. It's so funny that it's almost the end of July and I'm in my like chai sweater fantasy book era. I guess I'm just ready for fall. <laughs> I've been wanting to DNF since 70%, but I was like, no, I'll just put the audiobook on a higher speed. It'll be great. I'll take it as it is. But I keep rolling my eyes because of this man. He is the antithesis of any book boyfriend I could ever want. I feel like he went straight from emotionally unavailable and like toxic to possessive and cringy. Something about him's not doing it for me. Then I feel like Diana, our main character, I do like her, but I don't think she has a ton of depth. Like she really just cares about her sister and her sister's safety, not much else. And I was like, okay, well, if you think about Akhtar, like that was Feyre's priority too. Then as the series goes along, Feyre starts to care about the fate of the world, protecting the humans, connecting with art, building her found family. And I feel like Diane is just kind of there. We're not getting much more. I guess they just don't resonate with me specifically. Okay, that being said, I'm coming off of a three book series that I absolutely love that I've been reading for weeks. And I don't know if this book really had the fairest shot. Maybe that's on me. I also just think it's not my type of book that I want to read. It's just that it's a fantasy book where the plot is the relationship. Nothing is wrong with that. I think that can be so interesting and obviously people love it. But for me, I think I like when the relationship is a side plot. For some reason that makes the romance hit so much harder to me. Okay, I feel good. I feel good having accepted that. The thing is, I'm in a market that I read it. Not on Goodreads, but like in my notes app for reads of the year. I just feel like 80%, I, I'm gonna claim this one. I'm gonna claim this victory. I just wanna love everything. You know, but you can't love everything. If you loved everything, it'd be like every, <laughs> not me getting so deep about this. It'd be like if every book was just a participation ribbon. And if every book was participation ribbon, there would be no queen of shadows at first place. Feral crying, weeping. It would just be like, that's my update for now. It is now Sunday and I am back with a little quick silver update. I do not think 
I have had this much fun reading a book this entire year. Wait, I'm gonna look at my book list. I would say the other books I've read this year that have been so fun are Chalice of the Gods, the new Percy Jackson book, Red Scrolls of Magic, which is a Shadowhunters, Sweetie Reads Like a Fanfic, perfect book, and then Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. All of those were five stars, but something about this book, it is just the fantasy kick that you want and need. It's a fresh twist on Faye. It's original. The characters are lovable. We've got found family, tension. The main character is great. I'm just having the best time. I have laughed so much out loud. Like there is a specific character in here that makes me so happy. And another aspect I'm loving is that the enemy, the antagonist are like this Faye vampire kind of hybrid, which I was not expecting at all. And honestly, I feel like the Fae in this are a little bit more like vampires than the Sarah J Mass-esque Fae. That's been really fun, especially because I'm about to read Serpent in the Wings of Night. I was just already in that mindset. I knew around page 200, I was like, okay, so far to me, this is a perfect book. Not necessarily because it was rewiring my brain chemistry at that point, or maybe even at this point, but because I was just having such a good time. The amount of <laughs> times I have just babbled about this story to my partner, he's so nice, but that's how feral I am I'm like I can't keep it in and I don't want to tell any of my friends because I want them to read it so he's the lucky bearer of all of the updates and you guys except spoiler free because I want you to read it as well. This book is 622 pages and I am on page 509, so I hope to finish it tonight. I can feel that we're getting into the final push of the story. The plot points are plotting, exciting things are happening. The magic system is really unique. It's got this alchemical aspect of controlling metals, hence the title Quicksilver. And I think it's really fun to see a new aspect of fantasy and magic set to the familiar tune of a romanticy book. I've been trying to read the Kindle Unlimited or Libby or free version of things before buying the physical copy because I'm wanting to be more intentional about my at-home book library. My goal for myself is to get at least 50% in. If I'm feeling over eager and just want to buy it, I'm like, read 50% and if you still like it, then you can buy it right at 50. I was like, done and done. And I bought both covers of this book. There's this one, of course, Iconic Angsty Man. And then there's a more subtle cover. Some Someone called it something funny on TikTok. Oh, the discreet cover. It's less clear that you are reading a very steamy romanticy. Also, I wanted to say I'm kind of iffy like on smut. It has to be done right. I feel like sometimes I love smut, sometimes I don't. Book of Asriel, did not lie. This book, mm-hmm. Yep. I'm going to finish the book and then I will be back with a recap, my official rating, and also I will unbox the physical copies. But so far, I really recommend this book. holding it in my hands two times because apparently I needed both. <laughs> this was like the easiest five stars I have given in forever. Like I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, yes. Side note, but my air conditioning is on and the neighbor's mowing the lawn. So I'm just praying the audio is not too bad at this time. I think this book deserves all the hype. I think it's perfect for Actar fans because it's similar, but I think it also maintains its originality. I have DNF books before when I thought they were too similar to Sarah J Mass. But even though this is a mortal woman in the Fey realm, I think it was really unique, especially the magic system. The world was very atmospheric. There were plot points that blew my mind. There were subplots that are very different than, I mean, the whole book's different than Akatar, but there are subplots that were very different than Akatar. Oh, it was so funny. Connor said he's never heard me laughing so much over a book before, and that is because of my favorite character, Carry On. I was shook that his name is Carry On because the only time I've ever heard that word is in Sarah J Mass's books when she's talking about like dead animals and dead meat. Oh, I've been saying it wrong. Carrion, not carry on, not carry, not carry on suitcase. Surely. Decaying flesh of dead animals. You're telling me that is the name of my favorite character, but I don't even care. He's so funny. He's such a little brat. He's so baby girl. He's so baby girl. Last time I checked in, I think I had what, like 30 pages left maybe, or maybe more. It was not a simple ending. It just kept going. It just kept delivering. 
blow after blow in the best way. Like I was giggling, kicking my feet. I had so much fun. Cannot wait to see it blow up more. I hope this is the book of the autumn. Also the second book comes out in October. Like what did I do to be so lucky? Thank you universe. I also wanted to give a final check-in on Heart of Lost Hearts, Daughter of No Worlds and that whole trilogy. I think it is very similar to how the Song of Achilles was for me this year which is I finished it and I really enjoyed it, but I had rated it like a little lower. And then with time, it was living in my brain, like constantly. I think about those books all the time. Straight up, I think that's an infinity star read for me, the whole series. And I was just too afraid to open my heart. It's just so scary and overwhelming the longer you're in a book space to give something an infinity star. I feel like the bar is really high or I overthink it more. This series is just so special to me. I think about it multiple times a day. I miss it so much. The characters mean so much to me. I'm just really grateful that I found it and was able to read it. And I am starting The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I actually already started it, so I'm a little bit in. I just barely unboxed this sweater for the shop. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a behind the scenes and show it off because it's going to launch really soon. It's a little off shoulder classic knit. I feel like red is such a vibe in summer 2024. That is going to be it for today's reading fantasy vlog. This is my favorite type of video to make. Kindle Unlimited fantasy fantasy core is so me right now. And I cannot wait to read the Crowns of Nyaxia duology. I can't believe we get new content for that this fall too. Like I, I feel so, what's the word? Abundance. I feel so abundant. I'm actually headed to Idaho for the week, going to a cabin with my friends and I'm hoping to read a lot while I'm there. We're all chronic yappers, so I don't even know if any of us will actually read. That's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world. Seriously, I love making YouTube videos so much. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.